tournaments and everything like that. A lot of people were excited about uh, the games moving forward. The first game that we do have in the fold for this week is going to be the it's a it's an oldie but goodie somewhat. You have the Pacers and the Celtics, and the Pacers and the Celtics in the at, at the twilight of Barry, Larry Bird's career, he got to play his former team a lot, and it was fun. It was always fun seeing Larry Bird play against the Pacers, his hometown team, in all senses of the word. And it's so funny to me that that you, we all know the Indiana Pacers would have did everything possible to bring Larry Bird in if he wasn't held hostage by the Boston Celtics. And it was funny because a lot of people don't know this. Bird loved playing for the Celtics so much. They asked him in about 89, 90, did he want to go to the Pacers because the Pacers were actually a better team at that point. And, you know, go play with Reggie Miller and Chuck Person and all these guys. And he said, hell no, I'm a Celtic for life. And so you see the loyalty in that situation right there. They don't teach that no more, man. And that's that's just, you know, something that's not around anymore because everybody's told, do what you want to do. You know what I mean? So that's how it goes. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, the Celtics come in here 15 and four. They're the best team in the NBA, no doubt about it. You got a, a Pacers team that's actually playing a little bit above their pay grade right now, but that's good. That's good. It shows improvement. It shows that when you're quiet and you make deals within and you try to build within, your team can be great. When you try to sit up in here and let the whole world know, oh, we're having controversy, we're having this, we're having that, then you know what? You're just nothing but a bunch of crybabies, dude. The Pacers, you know what? They sat up in here. They've had a lot of rosters that just didn't come together, but they've been able to maneuver, 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 and find themselves with a good group. That doesn't mean they're going to do more than this, but they got themselves a good group. Now, they did win their first game of the month. They're the, one of the highest scoring teams in the NBA as well, too. And you know what? They are number two in the Central Division behind the Milwaukee Bucks. So they are in good form. Ty, uh, Tyrese Halliburton is one of the best players in the league. And I told you, there's three guys that we can hand the keys to. Halliburton, Mello, or Ant Edwards. And the competition is still there right now. And um, I would probably give it to Ant Edwards because he's winning a lot more games. But Tyrese Halliburton is right behind him. And Tyrese Halliburton, you know what? They all keep talking about, well, Sacramento got rid of him. That wasn't a fit. He would have been burnt out playing in Sacramento, trying to compete back and forth with De'Aaron Fox. If they were that good, they would have been in playoff position that season. They were nowhere near playoff position that year. So, you know, you can't take a rookie year of Tyrese Halliburton and think that it was going to be able to transition to a great era in uh, Sacramento. But this twosome has done well with Halliburton and Turner. And I guess you can throw Buddy Hill in there as the third uh, guy for your big three. And then, you know, Mathurin is a hell of a rookie. You know, he's a grown-ass man. That's what it's all about. And he's playing great basketball. Actually, he's in his second year, but he's playing great basketball. You know, he's he's really getting it. He's really getting into his own. A modern-day Andre Iguodala. It took Iguodala some time to really get into his groove, but now you see what's happening. But you got a team that scores a lot of points. They got um, – it looks like eight guys in double figures right now as well, too. So this works out pretty well. Now you have yourself the Celtics. The Celtics come into this game um, red hot. I keep telling you all the Celtics is just they're absolutely in fuego. They're number two when it comes to three point shots made and they're number three when it comes to rebounds. So those two stats right there will put you at the top of the league. It's that simple. You know what I mean? And I'm not even a guy that sells shooting three-pointers, but when you're able to rebound and hit threes, you're doing the right things out here. And then, you know, you have Tatum, who really does want to look great and win this uh, tournament. If you're not going to, you know, this is a good stepping stone to getting yourself to that NBA title, and we all know that. So I think that he'll be very, very focused in on tomorrow's Night's game. You got Jalen Brown playing great basketball, but the X factor is going to be Przingis, and we all know this. So pretty much with that, when it comes down to this game, I like the Celtics here. I think the Celtics won't have any stage fright. I think the Pacers kind of will be in here doing too much. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Celtics with the minus five and a half. We'll see. 